the situation here in Alice Springs is from 6 p.m. on the street where I'm standing right now and indeed across the Alice Springs CBD. If you are a child under 18 and unaccompanied, the police will remove you. It's a curfew that will last from 6 p.m. each night until 6 p.m. in the morning and they'll take you home to a responsible adult or parent. And the reason they're doing that is to try and curb this antisocial behaviour. They're going to do it for 14 days, so it will run over the Easter weekend right into the school holidays. Uh, and they're also doing this with the help of 58 additional police officers. Many of them are going to come down from Darwin. They're also going to be staffing bottle shops where takeaway liquor is sold. Uh, just gone now, uh, Alice Springs has very strict liquor restrictions and just now you can uh, buy alcohol from Wednesday through to Sunday between 3pm to 7pm on weekdays, not on Monday and Tuesday. And so more staff from the police will be staffing those bottle shops as well to oversee the distribution of alcohol. Now all of this is in an effort to try and curb what they say is horrific and uh, offensive incidents that have taken place in Alice Springs, not just this week, but over a period of time. And, it, you know, you've had people speaking about the fear that has emanated throughout this town and people worrying for their own safety. Now, police have said in all of this, Commissioner Michael Murphy just now has said that they will be evaluating at the end of the 14 days, but have promised within the next 24 hours that they will, we will see so-called calm restored here in Alice Springs, Greg. All right, so you've kind of touched briefly there, Miles, on uh, how we got to this point. There's been a long uh, build-up to this decision that's been announced today, but what were the more recent triggers within, let's say, the last 24 hours that have brought us to this announcement today? Well, Greg, there was certainly a flare-up yesterday after a large funeral that took place in Alice Springs CBD. There was a sorry business that took place here in town as well, and it was to commemorate the loss of life of an 18-year-old man who died when an allegedly stolen car crashed. He was one of nine people, police say, inside that car at the time when it crashed. And there was a ceremony that took place, and police have said over and over again it was a peaceful ceremony. The mayor even described it as a moving one that took place uh, without any hitches or problems. But it was afterwards in the afternoon between about 3.30 and 4 p.m. the first action started right here in Alice Springs, just over my shoulder at this pub, the Todd Tavern, where glass was smashed, bricks were just pelted at it, people were running up and fly kicking at the glass doors here. Really terrifying scenes that have uh, since gone viral, not only within Alice Springs, but all around the country. And, and that behaviour continued into the evening where there was another issue over in the east side of Alice Springs at a town camp called Hidden Valley where police attended uh, fighting that took place about 7pm. They say 150 people were involved. They seized 50 weapons. Some of them were edged weapons like blades and knives. Others were blunt weapons and they said throughout all of this that this behaviour was just completely out of control and there needed to be this emergency declaration. The Chief Minister said she was listening to what was happening and it's so interesting to hear some of the people who have lived in Alice Springs, Greg, for such a long time saying they've never seen an incident like this. They've never seen incidents where such massive people were fighting in very public places. And you've got to remember as well that when this took place in the afternoon, there's a preschool and a school just up the road from me, very close to where this pub is. And so the, the frightening element of that is certainly uh, something that has precipitated this reform. It's also interesting that those incidents took place before this curfew, you know, before 6pm when people uh, under 18 won't be able to uh, be unaccompanied in the CBD. So police already acknowledging there is a huge job and it won't just be the curfew that's going to be able to bring calm. It'll require a lot of hard work and many on the ground organisations would say it's going to need a lot more than policing. It's going to need social efforts in a whole bunch of non-government organisations as well as educational organisations and uh, ones working in the health sector as well, Greg. Yeah, I wonder, Mark just finally there was a question put to police commissioner murphy there about some sort of federal involvement he said that he'd spoken to the federal police commissioner reese kershaw and that afp will not be called in or deployed but but as you allude to there miles it's likely that many ngos community agencies are going to be involved here i just wonder out loud whether uh, inevitably some questions will be put at the federal level about additional resources to be put into your town 
Well, that's a very fair point to wonder. I mean, $250 million was pledged to Alice Springs in Central Australia when Anthony Albanese came by for quite a brief visit in January to Alice Springs where, again, uh, crime and antisocial behaviour took the national spotlight. A lot of that money hasn't been publicly allocated and there's been ongoing questions from several on-the-ground organisations that work in family safety, they work in education about where is that money going to go and how is it going to be spent. Now, whether more money on top of that 250 million will be allocated uh, remains to be seen and if the federal government will allocate any more they may well point to prime minister albanese's trip to the northern territory last week where mm. they guaranteed a lot more money for housing into the billions as well as for education and that will be supported uh, by the northern territory government so that they would probably argue that they've allocated this money i think the ongoing call and a very regular one in the northern territory particularly in central australia is where is this money going and can it hit the ground faster to address the very obvious social need here?